now we are dealing with unit four. Uh, starting up exercise number D. Uh, exercise number D is relevant to the starting up where we are discussing um, what makes a successful businessman. Exercise number D asks you to complete the statements with words that are suitable. You have the words on page 36 on the left. Uh, you choose from them. Uh, number one is a successful businessman is always making money and increasing its profits, uh, is often the market leader is moving forward and interested in innovation, has a motivated workforce, has a loyal customer base, has a world famous brand, um, issues shares which are worth millions on the stock market, has its headquarters in its prestigious location, uh, has branches and um, subsidiaries which means subordinators all over the world, uh, treats its employees well and is people oriented. So this is what makes a successful business. Now we move to exercise number A in the vocabulary. We have a, a reading passage relevant to prefixes. Um, we have several prefixes which we in exercise number B use them to match uh, to their meanings. If you are searching for example in number one for a word which means too much we're going to find the word over. Uh, better or more than, we use the word out, like outbid, for example. Badly is like miss, uh, mismanaged, again, as an example. Extremely means ultra, for example, like ultra modern. Former means X or previous. Opposite, you start with D, D located or something, D regulated or something like this. Also, we have with, which means co. Too little means under, and again means re. Exercise number C asks you to cross out the word in each group that does not follow the prefix in bold. You can say underperform, underrate, undercharge, but we do not say under profit. We can say co-producer, co-worker, co-author, but we don't say co-boss. We say relaunch, re-engineer, relocate, but we don't say re-decide. And take care that engineer here is used as a verb. Uh, over, overspend, overestimate, oversupply, but we don't say overlose. Miss, it's mismanage, misjudge, miscalculate, but we don't say mislook. We say outproduce, outbid, outclass, but we don't say outwin. We say ultra efficient, ultra cautious, ultra modern, but we don't say ultra big. We say ex bus, ex director, ex employee, but we don't say ex staff. We say demerge, denationalize, deregulate, but we don't say degrow. Exercise number D asks you to complete the sentences with words from the same exercise that we have just done. Uh, the first one is done as an example. Several sales staff underperformed last year and didn't meet their targets, which means that they did not perform well. Smith and Turner were the two co-authors of the report, means that they were working together. We will relaunch, means that launch once more our product as soon as we have finished the modifications. Number four, sales are very disappointing. We overestimated the number of people who would buy our product in Asia, which means that our estimations went beyond, you know, what is, what is supposed to be. Because the company has been mismanaged for years, we are close to bankruptcy. Number six, it was an expensive acquisition. They had to outbid, means pay them a higher price, the rivals, to take over the company. Our ultramodern factory has a state-of-the-art machinery. State-of-the-art, again, means ultramodern. Number eight, my ex-bus was impossible to work with, so I left the company. There is much more competition in deregulated financial markets, and this is number nine. And then we move to exercise number E, where, where we have underlined words or words that we need to discuss the, their meanings. Outselling your rivals is the best indicator of success. I just wrote for you the words that are uh, that need a meaning. Outselling means surpassing. Number two, mismanagement is the biggest cause of business failure, which means bad management. Number three, rebranding is often a pointless exercise. Rebranding means changing the corporate image. Underfunding, which means 
below funding and overstaffing, which is more than staffing, are the quickest way to failure. Undercutting the competition is a dangerous business strategy, which means offer goods or services at a lower price than a competitor. We move then to the reading passage, exercise number B, where we have an exercise asking us to match the words on the left with the words on the right to form word partnerships. We use business acumen. What's acumen? Acumen means keenness and quickness in understanding and dealing with a business situation to lead to an outcome, to a good outcome. Number two, it's economic, economic crisis. Number three, annual sales. Number four, retail outlets. Number five, turning point. Number six, buying spree. What's buying spree? It's a hard acquisition by a company of goods, assets, and other companies. Then we have global, global, it's global recession. Uh, finally, we have a part in this unit with which we end. The unit is relevant to the usage of the present and past tenses. Using each tense has a specific purpose and becomes clear when we put them in sentences. Exercise number A asks you to label the tenses in these sentences based on the article on page 39 and say why those tenses are used. For example, number one says, in recent years, Slim has begun to stretch his tentacles north. The word has begun is a verb in the uh, present perfect which is composed of has or have plus past participle. Here, we use it to announce news, has begun. Aged 11, number two, he invested in government saving bonds. Aged 11, he invested. Invested, this is a verb in the simple past tense. The simple past tense is usually used to indicate or describe completed actions or events which took place at a particular time or over a period of time in the past. Okay, well, then we move to number three. He remains frugal in his tastes. Fr um, he remains, this is a verb in the simple present. Uh, this indicates a situation which is generally true. The present simple describes action situations which are generally true. Then we move to number four. By 15, he had bought a very small shareholding in Banco Nacional de Mexico. He had bought, this is the past perfect. We use the past perfect to describe an action which is completed before a time in the past. Um, number five, Slim is currently looking at investing. He is looking at investing in distressed assets. Is looking, this is a verb in the present continuous tense. The present continuous tense is used to describe current or temporary situations. Okay, this is the usage of these words. Okay, thank you very much. This is the end of unit four.